In the last section of chapter 2, we're going to talk about two more kinds of proofs. These are called flowchart and paragraph proofs. Now, a second style of proof is called a flowchart proof, which uses boxes and arrows to show the structure of the proof. The steps in a flowchart proof move from left to right or from top to bottom, shown by arrows connecting each box. The justification for each step is written below the box. So here's our first example. Now before you write anything down, let's kind of go over what we're looking at. In this problem, it says use the given flowchart to write a two-column proof of the common segments theorem. So given, so we have a proof here, given segment AB is congruent to segment CD, I want you to prove that AC is congruent to BD. So as you can see in the flowchart, AB and CD, both those segments are congruent, that's your given. So if you'll notice in your two column proof, that's what we start off. So then the second thing is it says AB is equal to CD, and that's by definition of congruent segments. So that is what our second step in our two column proof is. Then we go up here. The length of BC is congruent to itself. The length is congruent to itself because of reflexive property, so that's going to be step three. And then step four and five are these two. Now this one says AB plus BC equals BC plus CD. This is by the addition property of equality. Then AB plus BC equals AC and BC plus CD equals BD because segment addition postulate. And then we can say AC is equal to BD because we substituted both of these in for this. And lastly, we can say our segments are congruent by definition of congruent segments. So if they are given, if you are given a flowchart proof, all you do is just follow the flowchart and write everything down in a two column proof. And here is what we just proved. We just proved theorem 271 the common segments theorem. So here's what it says. If we are given points A, B, C, and D arranged as shown, segment AB is congruent to segment CD. That means AC has to be congruent to BD. Here's why. Since BC is congruent to itself through reflexive property and AB is congruent to CD, then we know that AC would have to be congruent to BD. Because if you add a piece to this segment and you add a piece to the same congruent segment and that piece you're adding is the same thing, then they still have to be congruent. All right, here's example number two. In example number two, we're given the two column proof. I want you to write a flowchart proof. So we're going to start with our given. Our given says segment AC is congruent to segment BD. And because my writing here is so bad, I'm going to actually substitute in a picture. And there we go. So underneath that, you'll notice that we'll write the given. Now that we know that the two segments are congruent, we then can say they're equal and they're equal because of the definition of congruent segments. Now the next part, notice what we said here. Because AC is now equal to BD, we can work backwards and say AB plus BC equals AC, and that BC plus CD equals BD because of the segment addition postulate. Now you'll notice that we now said that they're equal because of the segment addition postulate. We then, look at what we did, we took the AB, which is equal to AC, so I, since AC is equal to this, I took it, plugged it in here, I took BC plus CD, plugged it in here, and we did that through substitution. Now, before we go on, I need to explain this step, this five and six step here. Step five, we, say, we can say that anything is congruent to itself through reflexive property of equality. Now, notice what happened here. We then get AB equals CD, and some people are like, I don't understand how we got that. In step four, we have an equation. In step five, we just said that BC is equal to itself. 
Because BC is equal to itself on both sides, I can su subtract BC from both sides of this equation. So if you subtract BC on both sides of this equation, what happens to your BCs? They cancel, and you're left with AB equals CD. And we did that by subtraction property of equality. We subtracted the BC on both sides. Now I went ahead and finished this. We then put BC equals BC up here, reflexive property of equality, and then subtraction property of equality, we can say that AB is congruent, I'm sorry, equal to CD. And lastly, because of the definition of congruent segments, since two lengths are equal, we can say that their segments are congruent. We now have another kind of proof. This is called a paragraph proof. A paragraph proof is a style of, pr of proof that presents the steps of the proof and their matching reasons as sentences in a paragraph. Although this style of proof is less formal than a two-column proof, you still much, must include every step. So we have actually two more theorems to learn. 272, 273. The vertical angles theorem, here's all it says. If you have two angles that are vertical, then the two angles are congruent. You know that already. The next one says if two congruent angles are supplementary, then each angle is a right angle. So this is called congruent angles are supplementary. If congruent angles are supplementary, then they are right angles. So if you know that angle one and angle two are supplementary and they're congruent, we know that they have to be right angles. And that's called this. Notice that there's no title here. So if you were going to have this as a reason, you would say this right here. Here's your, here's your little shortcut. Congruent angles supplementary means that you have right angles. Or you could write out in words, if two congruent angles are supplementary, then each angle is a right angle. Now in example three, we are given a paragraph proof, and we want to actually write the two-column proof from it. So here's what we got to look at. So let's look at our proof. Angle one and angle three in our field here are vertical angles. Prove that angle one and angle three are congruent. So paragraph proof. It says, angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles, so they are formed by intersecting lines. So we would start off by saying angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. That's the given. They are formed by intersecting lines. So you could say angle 1 and angle 3, which is our second step, are formed by intersecting lines. Why are they, How do you know that? Because if they're vertical angles, we know by definition of vertical angles that angle 1 and angle 3 are formed by intersecting lines. Then back to, up to our paragraph proof. Therefore, angle 1 and angle 2 are a linear pair, and angle 2 and angle 3 are a linear pair. There's our step 3. And the reason is, is a definition of a linear pair. Then it says, by linear pair theorem, there's our reason, we can say angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary, and angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary. Now, remember, Definition of a linear pair says if two angles are a linear pair, then they are supplementary. Now we know that if angle one and angle two are supplementary, and angle two and angle three are supplementary, we know that angle one and angle three are congruent. Why? Because of the congruent supplement theorem. And we learned that back in section 2.6. So remember, you're still you, once we have a theorem, you're going to have to use them. And in 2.6, you learned the congruent complement theorem, the right angle congruent theorem, the congruent supplements theorem, and the linear pair theorem. So you had four theorems that you learned in section 2.6. So we just take whatever, all of our reasons and all of our examples here in order, we write them as a two column proof. Example four is given here. And the directions say, use this given proof to write a paragraph proof. All you have to do is go step by step and tell me why they're equal. So let's look. Let's go over it first. Angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. They are also congruent. So because they are supplementary, we know that if we add them together, their measures will be 180 degrees by the definition of supplementary angles. We then can say that because angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent, that their measures are equal because of the definition of congruent angles. 
Now, by substitution, I can take the measure of angle 2, replace it with the measure of angle 1, and we have the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 1 equals 180 by substitution. By simplifying, I have 2 times the measure of angle 1 equals 180. Divide both sides by 2, you get the measure of angle 1 is 90. By transitive property of equality, we can plug the 90 in, and because the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2, and the measure of angle 1 is 90, then the measure of angle 2 also has to be 90 because of transitive property. And now that we said that both of these angles are 90 degrees, we now can say that they're right angles by definition of a right angle. So in paragraph proof form, you do not have to have this exactly. But we'll start off by saying that the measure of angle 1, I'm sorry, angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. So that means their measures add up to 180 because of the definition of supplementary angles. Since they are also congruent, we know that their measures are equal by the definition of congruent angles. Then we could say by substitution, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 1 is equal to 180. So the measure of angle 1 is equal to 90 by the division property of equality. Because the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2, and the measure of angle 2 equals 90. By the transitive property of equality, we can say the measure of angle 1 is also equal to 90. This is a step that a lot of students have problems with, the transitive property. If the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2, and the measure of angle 2 equals 90, then the measure of angle 1 can equal 90 by the transitive property of equality. So both are right angles by the definition of a right angle. The only two vocab words today are flowchart proof and paragraph proof.